Welcome to this month's Messy Church, which is about Mother's Day. Have you ever wondered what the history of Mother's Day is? Well, 500 years ago, Britain was a very different place to live in. In those days, many, many people had to move away from home in order to get work and live away from home. This included children. Lots of people travelled to different places and got work in farms or big houses or richer people's houses. This was called in-service, where they basically were servants in those places. As I said, this included children. Children as young as 10 would move away from home and um, gain work where they could to help out the family. Now, gradually, the custom developed of allowing people to come home once a year to the churches where they grew up, called mother churches, where they would meet their families for the service and then go back home to the families for the day afterwards. This usually happened on the fourth Sunday of Lent. And it was the only time that where whole families could get together, really, because the working hours were so long. And they weren't really allowed any days off on other occasions. So the day when they went back to their mother churches and their families became known as Mothering Sunday. It was called I'm Going a Mothering. Children and young people who were given the day off on that date so they could visit their families had to walk home because there was no transport. And on the way home, they would often pick wildflowers from the sides of the road as a gift that they either put in their home churches, their mother churches, or they gave to their mums. And that is where the custom of giving flowers to mums has come from. Obviously, we don't only give flowers, we give other gifts to our mums. As the dates of Lent vary each year, so does the date of Mother's Day. I've two stories for you today about mums. The first is a legend, which means we're not really sure how much of it is true or not. But it's a great story and it teaches us a really good truth. Now, many, many years ago, in the old city of Rome... There lived two brothers with their mum. One day the brothers were looking through the kitchen window where in the garden was their mum and her friend walking through the flowers. The younger brother said to his older brother, Car, look how beautiful mum's friend is. Look how many jewels she's got and how they sparkle. The older boy said, Yes, but she's not as beautiful as her mum. She might have a fine dress and sparkling jewels, but her mum is loving, kind and caring. Her mum is like a queen. I know, said the younger brother, mum is the best mum in Rome. She is like a queen. The boy's mum, whose name was Cornelia, came in from outside to speak to the boys. She was dressed simply in a white robe without sleeves and bare feet, which was the custom of Rome in those days. She didn't have any jewels around her neck or rings on her fingers or a crown on her head. But she smiled at the boys and said, boys, I have something to tell you. What is it, mum? They said. She said, today you're going to dine with me and my friend in the garden. And then after our lunch, She's going to show you her casket of jewels that you've heard so much about. The brothers looked shyly at the mother's friend. Was it possible that she could have even more rings than the ones on her fingers and the jewels that are around her neck, even more of them in the casket? They wondered. Well, outside, after lunch, a servant brought the casket from the house. It opened up and inside there were stacks of jewels. There were lots of white pearls on beads. 
there were beautiful blue sapphires, bright red rubies and diamonds. Many diamonds that sparkled and glistened in the sunlight as the sunlight caught them. The brothers stared at the jewels. The younger one whispered to his brother, I wish mum could have some jewels like these. At last the casket was closed and carried away safely. The rich lady said to the boy's mum, Cornelia, I've heard people saying that you're poor. Is it true that you haven't got any jewels? Cornelia pulled her two boys close to her side, one each side, and said, I have very special jewels. These are my jewels, and they're worth far more than your gems. The two brothers never forgot their mum's words, and when they grew up to be well known in Rome, they always thought of their mum and the words that she'd said about them. Before I tell you the second story, which is a true story from the Bible about 3,000 years ago, I'd like you firstly to think about your name. Before you were born, I expect your parents thought long and hard about your name and what they would call you. They wanted to make sure your first name matched your surname. For example, I like the name Luke. I think that's a great name, but it doesn't really go with my surname, does it? Luke Long, Luke Long doesn't go. Although I like Luke, we called our boys Joshua, James and Joseph. Your parents considered the sound of their name. They said it over and over again to see that it sounded good. They probably shared it with close family and friends to see what they thought. They wanted a name to be that would be special because you're special, but they didn't want a name that was a bit strange or where you could be teased. For example, if your surname's Green, I shouldn't think your mum or dad called you Teresa. There was a politician called Hog. That was his surname. He had a daughter and he called her Ima. Not a good move. Ima Hog. Imagine how she'd be teased. Some names have special meanings which your parents probably thought about. For example, Charlotte means free. Alice means noble. Leo means brave. Florence means prosperous. David means loved. Skylar means scholar or strength. My own name, Gary, means brave or a warrior. Well, there's a story in the Bible, a second story, about a lady whose name was Hannah. Her name means God is gracious. But I expect that Hannah, for a long time, thought she wondered why her mum had called her that name. Because it seemed that God wasn't gracious to her because she couldn't have the one thing that she really, really wanted. And that was a son. Something was wrong with her in her womb that she couldn't have children. But she kept praying about this. And one day she went to the temple where she was on her knees, praying quietly. No sound, but her lips was moving. She was praying in her heart. Caught crying out to God. She said, oh God, if you would look upon me in my misery and give me the desire of my heart, let me have a son, then I will dedicate him in your service for all of his life. But the old priest, Eli, he stood by watching and he saw her lips moving and he thought she was drunk. So he went up to her and said, excuse me, what are you doing drinking in the temple? She said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not drunk. I'm just calling out to God. I'm telling him exactly how I feel. And Eli said to her, well, may God grant your request. May he give you what you ask for. Guess what? God did give Hannah what she asked for and she was able to conceive and she gave birth to a son who she called him Samuel. Samuel grew up to be famous in Israel and the two books in the Bible named after him telling about his life story. Do you know what Samuel means? It means asked of God because God had heard and answered her prayer. Hannah was faithful to keeping her promise and when he was old enough 
she took Samuel to the temple where he served God by helping Eli, the priest. I'd just like to finish by praying a Mother's Day prayer. Dear Lord, none of us have had perfect mums, but we honour our mums because you chose them to create each one of us. Lord, for many, Mother's Day is a difficult day, so we ask you to comfort those mothers with heartaches today. For those who have lost their mums, comfort them. For those who have lost a child through miscarriage or death, please comfort them. We pray for those who have had delayed or failed adoption and their heart has been broken. Comfort these mums. Please comfort mums who wanted to be mums, but it just hasn't happened. Comfort those who've struggled with infertility. Wrap your arm around these women today. At the same, t same time, you've called us to rejoice with those who rejoice. We are glad for those who have recently had babies or will give birth soon. We celebrate with those who have fostered or adopted children. We thank you for mums at every stage of our life. We thank you for mums of babies and toddlers whose work is never finished. We thank you for mums of school children who pack lunches, give them lifts and help them with homework every day. We thank you for mums who feel the pride and ache of now being in the empty nest stage. Today, we commit ourselves to respect, care for and protect the mothers in our lives. We thank you for the gift of mothers and pray your blessing on them today. Amen. Amen.